You're watching Adorama TV. Hi everybody, welcome to Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace. Well today we're going to be talking about the 5D Mark III. It's Canon's newest uh, camera that just came out uh, this month. And uh, this one that I have here was sent to me by Canon and it has uh, the body which runs $3,500 if you just buy the body. But it also comes in a kit with a 24 to 105 L lens, an F4 lens. And with the kit it's $4,300 and that's what I tested. So I tested the 5D Mark III with a 24 to 105 L lens and I love this camera and so what I did is I actually got together with a bunch of my friends that also have a 5D Mark III. We had lunch, we went out, we went to downtown Phoenix and we shot a bunch of samples. So I want to show you the samples and talk about my shooting experience first and then we'll dive in and we'll talk about some of the geeky stuff and have some tech joy and talk all about the menus and the sensor and all that kind of stuff. But first let's look at some pictures. And I've got these in my iPad and just so I know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to be looking at these. We'll show these to you on screen. We'll start off here by this picture that I shot. And this is a picture of my friend Craig. We shot this in low light in a restaurant when we were getting ready to go out and shoot. And you can see that this is shot at a... Uh, a really low light and it's an ISO 2500 and if you zoom in on this uh, sort of over by his ear and those uh, the background image that nice bokeh there you can see that it's got almost no noise and so it's a really nice pl uh, pleasing grain and so for wedding shooters, event photographers, and this was with zero flash, so there's no flash at all in this picture. Um, and this was in a really dim room. You can see that this is really going to be a great camera for you because the, the possibilities are uh, really opened up with the dynamic range and the ISO range. This actually goes all the way up to 25,600 ISO, and you can even expand that all the way down to an ISO of 100. So I love that. Well, the other thing I wanted to check is uh, this has a new metering system. And I wanted to see how that metering system actually behaved. And so we found this building with this really nasty glare. And you can see here, now on other cameras we tried, the uh, metering just got this wrong because that glare coming off that building made everything underexposed because it was trying to correct for that. And the 5D Mark III had no problem getting this shot. And you can see that the exposure is correct. And that's the actual building. It looks just like that. And so I love that. I also wanted to check out some of the... Um, the tonality, so if we could find some details in the shadows and highlights and how it uh, handled color. So I shot this picture of this building and it's got this sort of mirrored glass here and you can see that it really does a great job of pulling out color as well as details in the shadows and the highlights. You can see that those silver pillars over there look great. The graduations are really, really nice. Um, and so this was in, in nice daylight. Um, now, I also wanted to check and look at the uh, colors for scenic photography as well as specifically the greens for uh, uh, plants and flowers and stuff. And so here's a shot I took really close and I shot this with my um, the 105 millimeter lens and I was able to get really nice and close to this plant and you can see that those uh, greens are nice and saturated and it's really crystal clear um, and, and I really liked how that looked. You can see that the textures and patterns here, this is a building with just a bunch of windows, it looks really really nice. I wanted to try open shade and so I had my friend Craig be our model for this. He's probably going to beat me up, he doesn't know he's in this video. But here he is in this open shade and I was really trying to test to see uh, again, dynamic range. How would this expose with him right on the edge of that open shade in this back alley with a lot of dark areas in there? And you can see that it does a great job of pulling out all those details. I wanted to try out the in-camera raw processing, so I wanted to have a really highly uh, highly um, high contrast image black and white of these papers here and so you can see the blacks are absolutely black the whites are really nice got a lot of detail so these menus here look great in black and white I wanted to also check out the saturation so to really saturate colors I took a picture of this building that has all these colors and reflections and details and you can see again the 5D Mark III does a spectacular job of capturing all of those tonalities and speaking of dynamic range I wanted to test the built-in HDR capability and the dynamic range of the camera. So in Phoenix uh, on this day you can see that in this picture we actually have the moon uh, in the sky, we've got this really bright blue sky as well as some midtones, and then in the foreground we have those trees and this is the, just the normal image as uh, I, I shot it and I turned on the HDR, built-in HDR capabilities and took uh, three more shots and had the camera put those together 
and you can see that we have the normal image, the underexposed image, the overexposed image, and then the final image that was put together by the camera. Now, in uh, my experience with just this one experiment, it didn't do as much as I expected, so I wanted more to be pulled out of those trees in the foreground, and I didn't get that. So it looks very similar to what the original out-of-camera image looked like. So I think I needed to go and uh, tweak that a little bit more to get better results from the HDR, but um, I was really impressed with how the camera lined everything up and put everything together. I shot all of this handheld, so I think with a little bit more experience and learning how to dial this in, I'd get better results. But for what it's worth, that's what I got uh, with those experiments, which was really limited. Now this image here, this is a salt and pepper shaker and some flowers on a table. And if you look at this, you can see that it has just a little bit of noise and it might not be uh, the quality that you would expect out of this camera until you realize that this is just a cropped portion of this image. And this image was shot through a window uh, on the sidewalk. And that is really impressive that I could get that close and that uh, uh, cropped and see that much detail and it looks that nice. And so again, the 5D Mark III was just impressive over and over and over again. The colors, here's a Phoenix that I shot. This is some art in uh, downtown Phoenix. These are right out of cameras, really nice saturated colors. I really like that. Again, I wanted to check to see if I could get some of that really gritty, uh, almost over-sharpened look. And so this was an image that I uh, processed in RAW. I really love how I got all these uh, details in this no parking sign right here. This would make a great backdrop for a screensaver or something. Here's another image that I shot to check out the, uh, the focus, the close focus of this lens specifically and to see how sharp it was. I was really impressed. And then just another uh, image here of Starbucks to see how the greens and the blues and all that kind of stuff, the uh, specular highlights, how that would work. And uh, again, just great results. So that's my experience shooting just for an afternoon with the 5D Mark III. And what I kept saying, and we had about uh, three other photographers that all had 5D Mark III's, and all I could hear over and over again was, whoa, that is amazing, that is spectacular, that is unbelievable. And so uh, my personal experience with the camera, just uh, totally subjective, is I was blown away by this camera's capabilities. So that's my uh, subjective experience. Let's talk about some of the geeky stuff, the uh, technical specs, so you can really dig in and talk about this. Well, this is not, um, the question I've been getting on Twitter and Facebook is, is this camera worth the extra thousand dollars over the 5D Mark II? And I really want to make sure that you understand something. This is not a 5D Mark II with some upgrades. It is a totally separate camera and it's brand new. So it shares the same name, but it's sort of like comparing a 1976 Corvette to a 2012 Corvette. They're the same car, but really they're not. They, say, they share the same name, but everything has changed. Different engine, different uh, everything, different technology. And that's the same thing with the 5D Mark III over a 5D Mark II. Really, this is a totally new design, all new technology, new sensor, new image processing, new autofocus system. And so it's really more of a 7D and a 1DX combined and uh, very little of the 5D Mark II is in this camera. So is it worth the extra thousand dollars? I think it, it's a no brainer that if you're looking at a 5D Mark II or a 5D Mark III, that a 5D Mark III is well worth the $3,500 uh, that it costs. So let's talk about why that is. First of all, this is a 22 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. And also the viewfinder has 100% coverage. So when you're looking through there, you see everything that the sensor sees, which is really nice. The ISO is amazing. So it goes from 100 all the way up to 25,600, and that's expandable. And so you can shoot in just about any lighting condition. And uh, even though this is a 22 megapixel camera, which means that those pixels are really small, the noise is very low, even up to ISO of 12,800 and up in that range. And so it's very pleasing. So if you're shooting uh, wedding receptions or events, you're gonna be able to shoot things that, um, that normally you wouldn't be able to shoot and you'll sell more photos. And because you're selling more, more photos, it'll pay for itself, this camera will. Um, the other thing that I noticed right off the bat is on the back of the screen here, let me see if I can bring up an image. Um, this screen is extremely bright. It's extremely clear. It's almost like looking into a 3D TV when you're looking at your images on the back of this. And that's what everybody says when they see this camera for the first time is like, wow, 
that is really impressive. It's like a little movie screen. So this is a very high resolution 3.2 inch LCD and uh, it's got some glare to it, but not as much as previous, uh, the 5D Mark II. So um, outside, it really helps you dial in the exposure. A couple other things that are different about this, you can see that there's a totally different redesign on the back. So there's a bunch of buttons here that sort of show you that the playback features have been totally revamped. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later. Um, this dial and uh, where these different lock switches are totally different. The on-off switch is now at the top of the camera. Um, these haven't changed too much. One of the things that people love about this is the depth of field preview button right here is now big and huge and you can get right to it as opposed to the 5D Mark II which was this little button that was sort of on the side. So that's right there, it's big and beefy. And then there's also a uh, customizable switch so you can program this switch here this multifunction switch on the top to do and behave and do things that you want it to do. And so that's really nice. On the side, if I open up this, there's now two slots so that you can put an SD card and a CF card and you can shoot it to both of those at the same time or one and then the other. So you've got automatic backups sort of right there built in and you can shoot and choose which uh, card works best for you. On the side, there's been some improvements. So in addition to the stereo microphone for video recording, there's now a headphone jack and so now you can listen to what you're recording which is really nice and you can make sure that there's no air uh, pops or plosives or things like that so that's very very nice the HDMI out is great it's still compressed and so some cameras most notably the Nikons have uncompressed HDMI this is still compressed so there's room for improvement there um, some of the things on the menu settings the menu settings have been totally revamped and so now you can look at uh, images side by side so you can push this little button here and you can start viewing images side by side and compare those um, there's built-in raw processing so if you want to uh, take a raw image convert it to a black and white and save a new image from that raw file you can do that all in camera you can really dial those in and I wish we had time to go through that but that'd be about a 10 minute tutorial to show you how to do that but it's really really powerful I want to talk to you about one of the most significant upgrades and changes to this camera and that is the movie recording. And so it still has 1080p 30 video recording, just like the 5D Mark II, uh, but now it has a, uh, an external headphone jack. It's got stereo mic for, the, uh, for audio, which the 5D Mark II had. But a couple of big, huge improvements that are, are made here. One is now the live view switch. This is stolen from the 7D. You have a live view switch here for movie recording and you can set up how everything behaves for that. And then you have a live view switch for still recording and you can set up the display for that. So you're not having to compromise what you're getting from live view um, for both things. So you can program those independently. The other thing that is really nice is when you're recording uh, a movie, when you're making adjustments to the settings on some cameras and most notably the 5D Mark II, when you make those adjustments, you hear clicks. So if you're not using an external microphone, you'll hear those adjustments being made. So uh, what Canon has done is now as you're recording, this wheel right here is touch sensitive. So I push this little Q button and as I start pushing this, it's sort of like an iPad screen where it just sort of senses what's going on and you can roll things in and out and that makes zero noise. So it makes no noise at all, and that really helps you when you're shooting video because now you can go in and you can dial in settings, change exposure, change the sensitivity of the microphone, and it doesn't uh, impact your audio at all, which is really, really nice. Now, one thing that I did notice with this lens that it should be noted, if you have an IS lens and you're shooting video, the servos, little motors inside the lens, are noisy enough to be picked up by the internal microphone. So if you're shooting with an IS lens, make sure you turn off uh, the IS or else that's going to come into your recording. Now the other huge thing about the movie recording that is significant with the 5D Mark III is now you can record almost 30 minutes continuously. So it's like 29 minutes and 59 seconds I believe. So it's it's effectively 30 minutes of recording as opposed to previously on the 5D Mark II you could only record up to about 10 minutes. Now you'll have to have a big card, a fast card to do that, but now for interviews and shows and webcasts and things like that where you need more than that 10 minutes, you've got a camera that will allow you to do that. Now the other huge significant improvement to this camera is the autofocus system. 
So uh, what's happened, a lot of people thought that the 5D Mark III would take the autofocus system from the 7D, which was a great, and is a great autofocus system. But they didn't do that. What they did is they took the autofocus system from the 1DX, so the flagship D-series uh, top-of-the-line Canon camera. They took that autofocus system and put it in this camera, and that has not been done since the days of film with the lower end cameras having the best autofocus system Canon has to offer. So it's a 61 point autofocus system. So for sports shooters, low light shooters, uh, environmental shooters, it doesn't matter what you're shooting, you're going to be able to use an autofocus uh, system that works for you. It's got 41 cross type autofocus points and five dual diagonal uh, autofocus points. And these are optimized for 2.8 lenses. Um, and this F4 lens also allows you to get some of that uh, benefit as well. And the nice thing about that is in the uh, menu system, there is a new menu system just for the autofocus uh, system to dial in exactly how you're shooting. And so there are these different settings and you can look at those and it makes it easy to choose the autofocus system that works for you. Now the other thing I mentioned earlier is the metering system. This has a 63 zone IFCL metering system and that really helps the Digic 5 processor go in there, look at what the scene is doing and choose uh, the metering that is correct for what you're shooting. And so it sort of makes it um, effortless when you're trying to get difficult scenes to meter correctly. This shoots up to six frames per second so it's, uh, it's pretty speedy for sports shooters. Um, it has, as I mentioned earlier, in-camera HDR processing. It also now has multiple exposures, so you can do multiple exposures for people that have been wanting that. The auto bracket goes plus or minus 8 EV, and so you can do um, dynamic range in post-production using uh, Photoshop or whatever image processing you want. So you can go in there and really get a broad range of dynamic range and not have to do that in manual mode. Now you can do plus or minus 8 EV, which is pretty impressive. The other thing that is uh, new with this camera is JPEG processing, and even this throws us in the metadata and RAW, is that chromatic aberration correction is now built in to this camera. And so it recognizes what lens is on the camera. And of course, this is for Canon only lenses. So when you put on a Canon lens, the camera knows what lens that is. It's familiar with the chromatic aberration that that lens has, and it will do in-camera correction for that which is spectacular. Um, and then uh, there's all kinds of other things. There's a rate button so you can rate things and say this is uh, the best of. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this camera in the field by rating, doing image comparisons, by changing your uh, raw processing, making new images out of that. Um, there's also a bunch of upgrades that you can add. There's the new 600EX flash that's optimized for this camera and the 1DX camera. There is a GPS hot shoe mount that you can put on there. So if you're geotagging your images, this camera can do that. There's a Wi-Fi transmitter. There's a battery grip. There is a lot of things. So this is an entire ecosystem of new camera goodness. And so the question is, is this camera spectacular? Yes. Is it the best camera I have seen at this price point? Yes. This is a mind-blowing, awesome camera. Again, it's $3,500 for this body. If you want the body and the, this lens, this is a 24 to 105, it's $4,300. So uh, the bottom line is you will be highly impressed with this camera. It's easy to use right out of the box with a lot of power to dial it into the way you work in the future. So if you're on the fence wanting to know if you should buy it, I say go out and get it right now or maybe yesterday because it is a spectacular camera. Well, thanks for joining me this week. Remember, if you have questions about photography gear, you can send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.